Good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath day to everybody. Welcome in, welcome in. I'm Pastor Greg Mostella at Tribe Judah Ministries here in Starkville, Mississippi. Welcome to Starkville, everybody. Glad to have you in here with us on this beautiful but rainy Friday. Uh, when we consider that we went uh, about a month and a half, uh, maybe a few days, give or take a few days uh, without rain, hot and dry over that period of thing, we uh, over a period of time, we are so very thankful that we at last have some rain. Now it may come with a little bit of flooding and uh, that's why we can be glad that we don't control it, that God is yet in control, that he yet gives us what we need and not what we want. Sometimes we could be crying out for rain and uh, it would we would have a flood on our hands because we don't know sometimes what we're asking for. Good morning, Steve. Love you. Love you so very much. Appreciate you. Love to your parents and uh, want you to know that we appreciate you having you in our lives. Good morning, everybody. Welcome into the broadcast. If you come in, say hey and uh, invite somebody, interact with the people who are part of your group. Steve is uh, joining us on Facebook Live. You can join us today from Periscope, from Facebook Live. You can join us from uh, IG. You can join us as well from Twitter, and you can join us from YouTube. We're on all of those platforms, thank God, at one time. Technology has come a long way. Good morning, Kimmy. Love you today. So happy to have you all in here. You all come in and, and uh, want you to know that we appreciate today. I am saying it is still good morning uh, in Central Standard Time Zone. I'm running a little bit late, a little technical glitches, and uh, but we're working through those and learning how to use this new platform. Welcome aboard, everybody. We've been talking this week. Uh, about a new book that just released this last week. It's called Crushed, Finding Meaning in Suffering. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it is a big book. It is a big book, but uh, it is chock full of the word of God and what the word of God has to say on the subject of suffering. The Bible, it is impossible for me to get it all in here but the Bible has a great deal to say about suffering. Uh, it has a great deal to say about healing. And uh, it has the great deal to tell us about miracles and how to prepare for a miracle, how to get a miracle when you need one. Um, there's just so much here in God's word for us that uh, we decided actually was inspired to write this book and uh, went through a period of consecration and preparation to do this. Uh, and just in fact, just throughout the writing process was a great time of consecration for me. I thank God for this moment in my life. Now, how many of you know that you need to prepare uh, for life in good times? Don't wait till bad stuff creeps in on you because bad stuff does have a way of coming. A lot of people think that if I'm thinking, uh, preparing for bad stuff, then bad stuff is automatically going to happen, that it's kind of faith in reverse. No, we are to live each day in expectation of the goodness of God. Uh, an, an old lady once said that tonight we'll aim for the stars, we'll aim for the moon, but if we fall among the stars, we'll still be on high ground. That kind of makes sense to me, that we are to aim for the best. We are to seek for the best. We are to desire the best. Uh, but if it doesn't come, uh, to God be the glory anyhow. Regardless of what takes place, to God be the glory. One of the things that I like about Brother Job, Brother Job said, the Lord gives, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, his theology may have been a little bit off. His characterization may have been off. Uh, according to our modern and Western sensibilities, we tend to think that, uh, uh, you know, God is not the author 
of bad stuff, and, and neither is he. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I'm calm that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So we know that good things do come from God, that the devil is the source of evil in the earth. He is the source of sickness and disease and torment. In fact, the garden was a very perfect place. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no pain. There was no arthritis. There was no rheumatism. There was none of this stuff. No dementia, no Alzheimer's, no Tourette's. There was no autism. None of this stuff existed before the devil came in the picture. He's the common denominator. And so we have to recognize that these things have a source. And a source is the enemy. The source is sin. But thank God Jesus solved. He paid the price for all of our sins, past, present, future. He paid the price. And uh, we can partake of healing of the goodness of God because of what Jesus accomplished for us. Uh, wow. Thank God for you today. I'm Pastor Greg Mostella. Uh, Tribe Judah Ministries here in Starkville, Mississippi. Pastor Michelle Mostella and I minister here in, at the tribe. We are ministering here online at marriagemakes3.com. You can, if you hashtag GD and me, you're going to find us somewhere on the web. Hashtag GD and me. Our links at marriagemakes3.com is right here, mm3 links, bit.ly, mm3 links. And there you're going to find, if you follow, you're going to continue and you're going to run into her book, Wading Through the Crap to Get to the Cross. I thank God for my gorgeous wife, my beautiful wife. She is so creative. She is so full of inspiration, so full of the word of God. Uh, one great woman of prayer. If you need a mentor in your life, if you need somebody who's going to direct you to your greatness, going to push you to your, get to your business, get your business off the ground, to make your business flourish, to make your life flourish, to get your relationship on the move, Pastor Michelle is one that you need to speak with. Uh, Talk to her about a mentorship. She's uh, mentoring people and getting, helping them. I promise you that she is helping them. Uh, you know, uh, may not be some cup of somebody's cup of tea, but she's my glass and my cup uh, of tea and coffee and everything else. I thank God for her. Wading through the crap to get to the cross. While some folks sit around and signify about what women can and cannot do, they're doing it and they're doing it with greatness. They're doing it for nets. Any man who sits around and talk about that, women can't do this, and you're still a little boy. You're still acting like a little boy. Girls can't climb to girls, can do whatever they want to do, and, 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 and preach better than some most, most men. Now, I'm not, I'm not disparaging any man. I'm not disparaging you. Some of y'all, you, you just get you, you get too twisted up. You get too hurt too easily. I'm just saying, it's a sorry frog. If you ain't praising your wife, who is? <laughs> you need to be praising what belongs to you, what's yours. Thank God for, you, for her. Um, my first book is entitled, So You Think You're Called to Ministry. Hello, Brother Pern. Appreciate you from Southwest Texas. Be well, be safe. It is, uh, I don't know if you're still getting rain. Well, Southwest te Texas, you're probably not. Southeast Texas, you may be seeing some rain. Appreciate you. Are you over there near Del Rio? Uh, El Pat, where you at? Where you at? Appreciate you. I spent a little time in Del Rio, Texas. I'll talk to you about that later. So you think you're called to ministry. Revised large print edition. Uh, I wanted my baby boomers. I'm one of you. 
I wanted you to be able to read without your glasses. And this book, you can do it. It's going to bless you. This is the companion workbook book. So you think you're called a ministry companion workbook. This one, you will be able to work out the ins and outs. It's going to help you tremendously to catalog your gifts and why you think you're called, your gifts, your callings, your dreams, your aspirations, what it is that you what it, what is it that you want to do for the kingdom? You can do it there is room for you to operate in what God says to do. There's room for you to list these things, uh, your gifts, and, and in the end, you can kind of figure out where you belong in ministry. Now, a, a wise person, what you're going to do is you're going to find out that you can work in a lot of areas. Your master's degree, your bachelor's degree may not land you the job that you wanted. Yeah, most people do not work in the area where they were trained, right? They end up taking that degree and placing it somewhere else. You can do a lot of things, but it's going to be a happy, happy person who is able to transfer whatever gift, whatever training, whatever um education they may have into what they want to do. Oh, it's a happy person who can make it work wherever they are. Uh, my third book was uh, entitled Breaking Nets and Sinking Ships. This is a great, great inspirational guide. It's a short uh, read, but uh, it will absolutely bless you. You can use it as a devotional. You can use it in a lot of different areas. You can uh, it's just many of them are just shortened sermons and uh, it will really bless your life. I believe that fully. All right. But we're talking from the book Crushed just around uh, a little bit about some of the stuff that's in here. I can't give it all to you, but I, I wish and I pray that you go ahead and pick it up at Amazon. It will absolutely bless you. If you order it today, I believe you'll have it Monday. Uh, at the latest. You'll have it Monday, uh, maybe Tuesday, depending on if they print. It's, this is Friday here, so probably Tuesday would be your best uh, opportunity to have this. But we're going to talk a little bit about it today, some of the information that's in it, the content that's in it. Thank you for joining me today, Kimmy. Pern is here. Uh, I can't, uh, Pern says, our son, I believe that's a son, has uh, autism. I think I'm seeing that correctly. God bless you, son, or uh, probably son. Uh, Pastor Michelle Mostella's book is about her journey as a female in ministry, bit.ly forward slash no crap. Thank you, Kimmy, for listing that for Pastor Michelle's book. Uh, that's right, wading through the crap to get to the cross. Thank you for putting that up for me. And you can find our reading materials from free downloads uh, bit, at our bit.ly link, MM3 links, MM3 links. Again, I appreciate you being in here with me. We're going to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit today. We've been talking from the book, uh, about the book, uh, Crushed, Finding Meaning in suffering, finding meaning in suffering. I want to remind you that clergy, uh, that October is Clergy Appreciation Month. It's also National Breast Cancer Awareness and Prevention Month. Make sure that you get screened annually. Make sure that you are checking yourself to make sure that you stay healthy as much as possible. Want you to know I love you. Share the broadcast and let's go ahead and move into our content. You all ready for the day? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I, I'm ready. All right. So I need to put in a code here real quick. Uh, forgive me for that. We've been talking. We talked yesterday about Job's three friends. Let me remind you that Job uh, in a two day period went from being one of the richest men in the East, one of the greatest men in the East, to one of the poorest. Not poor in, ter poor in terms of possessions, poor in terms of his health, but not in terms of character. Job was a great man of character. 
the scripture said that Job feared God and he eschewed or shunned evil. He rebuked evil when it came into his presence. Folk who came into Job's presence who didn't have their lives in order, there's something about Job that convicted them, that convinced them that they needed to get their lives right. Job sat at the entrance of the city. He sat among the elders of the city. What this means, in those days, the elder men sat around the entrance of the city, sitting around the gates of the city. You can see who's going in. You can see who's coming out. You can tell a lot about people through watching them. And Job was a wise man. If people were dealing with different issues where they needed advice, they needed counsel, they knew that Job was the person to go to. So he directed people and guided people concerning their lives, concerning how to be a success, how to order their lives for success. And so Job was, uh, he, he wasn't a, a slouch. He, by any sense of the word, he was not a slouch. He was a great man. Uh, he loved God. He feared God. And he shone evil and, and corrected evil when it came into his presence. The Bible says that of Job, that the princes, young men, when they saw Job, they would not even dare look in his face, but would lower their heads from Job's eyes. Uh, that is a, a, an indicator of respect, an indicator that this is somebody worthy of emulation, somebody that I need to mind my P's and Q's around, somebody that I am to revere, to honor, and to respect. Not only this, but Job was a very rich man. He was blessed with seven sons and three daughters. And one of the acts of Job that made him such a great man of faith was that he considered that his children might at some point do something foolish, do something impetuous or unwise in their youth. And so he made offerings and sacrifices on their behalf. How many of you know that young people are not always, we're not always as wise as we should be. And I say we because none of us are out of the woods yet. We're subject to, if we get in our pride, if we get to operating in our own thinking, then we can get off. Absolutely. We don't plan to get off. We hope that we can stay on the straight and narrow, but we are subject to get off. Don't let pride ever get in the way. Don't let, let arrogance uh, get in the way. And, uh, and, 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 and you can usually stay in the straight and narrow. Stay committed. Stay committed to the Lord. Stay consecrated. Live a fasted life. Live a life that's pleasing to him. Stay prayerful. And you, you can normally stay saved. <laughs> I, I say that because I grew up in an area where people always thought that you were going to backslide. You know, they want to know, are you, are you yet saved? Are you yet holding on? <laughs> All right. So thank you for joining us. Uh, share the broadcast. Let's go ahead and continue to talk about Job. So Job was a great man. He was a rich man. But what happened in a two-day period, the devil goes before God and uh, God says, um, have you noticed my servant Job, that there's none like him in the earth, uh, that he fears God and is choose evil? Yeah, yeah, you know, God is looking for somebody that he can speak well of. And we want to be, Kimmy says that God, that, that Job covered his home and family. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a wise person who covers their home and their family. You need to cover them with prayer. And this, this is what Job did. He covered them with prayer. He gave offerings and sacrifices. Lord, I'm praying for my child. You, you need to be lifting them up. Listen, 
You cannot rescue your child from everything in life. I'll say that again. You can't rescue them from everything. You may want to, you pray for them, you love them, you counsel them, you advise them, you scold them, you correct them if they're under your sphere of influence, but there comes a time when they're going to want to get off on their own. They're going to want to do their own thing. They're going to want to move out. They're going to want their, uh, give me the portion of goods that fall to me and just let me go out and make my own mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. That happens. And they do. They do make them. Yeah. Continue to pray for them, but you can't keep bailing them out. I, I wish somebody would hear that. You can't keep bailing them out. You are creating a situation. Remember Jonah? There are so many Jonas. Hey, Danielle, bless you, woman of God. There are so many Jonas. There are young people who are running from the call of God on their lives. They're, they're just like Jonah. I, I'm going to get out here and do my thing. They're the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter. They're doing their thing. And see, what happens is that Job comes in drunk and you got somebody at home that rushes to get a pillow to put it under him. Let him fall and bust his big old head. <laughs> that may sound harsh, but I have a son, I have a daughter. So don't tell me that I know. I know sometimes you can't protect them from everything. Love you, daughter. Appreciate you very much. Can't, can't. Can't, can't keep bailing them out. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Danielle, for sharing, for, you know, chiming in on that. We can't. You know, you'd be broken on food stamps. You'd be in bad shape if we keep bailing them out. Sometimes they have to hit. They have to go to the school of hard knocks. Come on. Some of us went through the school of hard knocks. And it, it's not... <laughs> You, you'll land all right because somebody's been praying from you from the beginning. Jonah had to have his hard knocks. He had to get cast out of the ship and into the belly of the whale. He had to go through that experience. There are some people who, who, who don't believe that fat meat is greasy. They don't believe when you tell them it's hot. They've got to touch it for themselves. Come on, you know. You know there are people like that in your life. They don't believe fat meat is greasy. <laughs> Absolutely. So they have to experience life for themselves. Can I tell you something here that when God loves us, was just discovering this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, there are people who have to learn the hard way. And guess what? God permits us. He will permit us to flail around, to fail. When there's a call on your life, he will commit you, permit you. I'm not saying that he orchestrates or, or, or puts suffering in your life. No, God doesn't do that. He's not the author of that. Remember, the garden was a perfect place till the devil showed up. Right? And anywhere he shows up, sometimes your home is a perfect place until, you know, one of the children come and they bring the devil with them, a, a guest, a neighbor, somebody comes and brings the devil with them. He doesn't have just authority to just walk in and out. Most of the time, if he comes into the church, it's because somebody invites him. You, you know, you need to make sure the devil isn't coming with you when you come to church. <laughs> but as our father's children, let me make this point and let's get out of here. As our father's children, he does not permit the devil to treat us any way he chooses. I wish somebody would get a hold of this. Quit blaming God for everything that happens in your life. Sometimes that's what keeps you suffering. That, that may sound a little bit harsh, but sometimes that keeps us suffering. Well, the Lord puts no more on us than we can bear. <sighs> Although there are things that happen and God, the devil has to get permission to do what he does. 
and God keeps them at bay, there comes a point when you invite him in, then the Lord has to take his hands off. I, I, I wish I would to God that most of us would catch a hold of this. There comes a time when God has to take his hands off. When his son went to the cross, when Yeshua went to the cross and he took on the sins of, of us all, the sky got dark because God has to stop looking. A holy God cannot stand in the presence of sin. He told Moses, take your shoes from off your feet. The ground you're standing on is holy ground. God can't stand in the presence. He won't stand in the presence of sin. He's a holy, a just, a righteous God. And sin has to be judged in his presence. So, But God is faithful when his children are faithful to him and love him and, and honor him. Remember, Dr. Mike Brown said what your honor draws to you, keeps coming back to you. But what you dishonor will move away from you. If you keep dishonoring God, he has to turn his head and allow the school of hard knocks to teach you what you won't learn any other way. It's not that he doesn't still keep the olive leaf, olive branch out. He still loves you and he still wants what's best for you. But you're going to go through some stuff when you're hard headed, when you're disobedient to the will of God in your life. As our father's children, when we're faithful to him and we love him, and there are some of you today who are suffering through some difficulties, you're going through some tough times uh, financially, you're going through some rough times uh, in terms of poverty, you're going through some impoverished times, some of you have faced uh, a stroke or heart attack, you face various conditions in your life. But know this, that as our father's children, he doesn't permit the devil to slap us around anytime the devil wants to or any way he chooses. The devil has to attain permission. Not only does he need to attain permission. Remember, the devil said, uh, you know, he had an opinion of Job. His opinion was that Job serves you because you're so good to him. You've given Job all of this stuff. You've given him seven sons, seven, three beautiful daughters, and they're all beautiful. They're all well behaved. He's given you all of this stuff. He's got a hedge around you. He's put all of this fence around you. You, 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 you have all of the trappings of success. You have all of this stuff because God has blessed you. And the only reason Job serves you, God, is because you blessed him so much. If you, if you take away some of this stuff, you'll see who Job really is. And so God gave him permission. You can, you can touch his stuff, but you can't take his life. Do not touch Job. You can touch his stuff, but don't touch Job. That's day number one. Second time, the devil comes, and uh, he's walking in among the sons of God. Know that he knows the protocol. Remember, he was kicked out of heaven. He used to be the angel that led the praises of God. He was the, uh, the expediter in the kingdom the chief, the main in charge of the praises. Huh. Don't let the devil stop your praise. I need to tell somebody today. Don't let the devil stop you from praising God. Praise him in spite of what you're facing. Praise him in spite of what you're feeling. Give God the glory. Job said, the Lord gives, the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. He recognizes the providence of God. We would say today that Job's theology was off because God does not take stuff. God gives stuff. Evelyn Wilson, God bless you. Glad to have you in here with us. Love you all. Thanks for joining me today. But as our father's children, he does not permit the devil to treat us any way the devil chooses. He's not my daddy. 
and he has no right to, to have an influence in my life, and he only has influence if I let him in. Because God says, God puts up a, a fence. <laughs> he, he casts it into the, he casts our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Micah said he cast them into, cast them into the depths of the sea. Uh, one of our theologians said he cast them into the sea of forgetfulness and puts up a no fishing sign. I like that second part. You have no right to go fishing about what, what's going on in my life and what has happened in the past. If forgiven, forgotten forever. Thank God. <laughs> but look at what happened. The devil doesn't have permission to whip us. We're not his to whip. We're not his to discipline. We're not his to correct. Thank God I don't belong to him anymore. I gave up a life of sin. I don't belong to him. I'm not his possession. I'm not his property. I'm not his whipping boy. Not only does God not give him permission, but God places limits on what the devil can do in your life. Now you can give him permission. You can open the door. Stop opening those doors. How do we open the door? We open the door by practicing a life of sin, by doing what we want to do. Willfulness, pride, hard-headedness. We don't honor folks the way we should. When you don't do those, you are creating, you're opening the door for the devil to just come in and to treat you any way he wants to do. So learn to honor, learn to show proper respect, to, to love folk and have folks love you in return. Stop treating folks like garbage. <laughs> oh my goodness. So the devil has to get permission. And then God places limits on what the devil can do. Can you prove that? Can, is there a word of God that says that? I've got one. Every man is tempted when drawn away of his own lust and enticed. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able to bear. <laughs> Some of the folks who love money. That's why you haven't got a million dollars yet. The devil can't tempt you with that because you, you lose your mind. <laughs> you haven't learned to be faithful with a hundred dollars yet. Oh my God. That 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 was that was a that was a, a blow right there. Some of us have not learned to be faithful with what we have yet. And so why should God trust us with plenty? Why should he allow us? Some of that's not even area of temptation. Not, I'm not going to fall for that. I'm not going for that. We already know that we've already said in our mind that if I ever receive it, I'm going to honor God because you're faithful. Some of you, every time you get something in your hand, the first thing you do is honor God. Thank God for you. Love you for that. Love you. Honor the Lord and he will bless you in ways that you didn't think possible. So every man is tempted when drawn away of his own lust and enticed. God is faithful who would not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able to bear. So God is faithful. He's not going to permit the devil to go into a bag of tricks and pull out a weapon that, but he's going to tempt you, but with those things that are common to man, he's not permitted to use uncommon weapons. He cannot use nuclear weapons against you. And some of us ought to be thankful because if it were up to the devil, he would have just misused us and, and killed us off somewhere. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But in all of this, we can move away from God's covering we can move away from his anointing. We can move away from his calling. And when we do that, he has little choice but to allow us to feel and to experience some things, right? He has to permit us to experience 
and suffer from the error of our ways. He's given a little choice. Lord, take take your hands. We, we've told him in essence, take your hands off. I can order my life better than you. I can prove it through scripture. The prodigal son, he says, I, 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 I give me the portion of goods that fall to me. Uh, that I'm going, I'm going into, you know, I want to go into the world and seek my fortune. I want to go out there and see what's out there for me. I want mine now. You'll also notice that this man, this father divided to them his living. So even though the, the eldest son was still there at the house, still eating daddy's he already had his portion. So he could have left right along with the youngest son. <laughs> he's still there, but he's operating in dishonor. And, and you'll see that if you read that scripture. He was at home. Yeah, you can be at home and not do anything and still create an environment that makes it harsh for your parents. Ah, my God. I hope you caught that one. You can still be at home. You can still be a, a church member. You can show up at church, but still operate in dishonor. You can be at home and not do anything, not honor your home, not honor your, your parents. But I was here. <laughs> can I tell you something? It, it might be better if you weren't there. You might do better somewhere else. Some of us need to get away but we need to get our hearts right. Don't leave in dishonor. And that was the case with this young man. But when he moved away from his father's covering, his father could only cover him with prayers. He could only hope that, well, I hope that I'll see my son again. He prayed for his son. He still grieved the loss of his son, although he loved him. There comes a point where God, says to you moved away from me. I still love you. I still honor you. I'm going to leave the light on for you. But it's going to be up to you to decide if you're going to come back home. And so God can touch our hearts. He can ping at our heart. He can bring us to a place of conviction. But ultimately, the call is still ours as to what we're going to do. But generally, as we walk in obedience to the will of God, as we honor him and are faithful to serve him, then we are protected from many of life's difficulties. Let me give you an example, and I'm going to get out of here. Let me give you one good example. In Malachi chapter 3, and Malachi right away, we know that chapter 3, we know that that deals with the tithe. And what God says that if you are faithful to give the tithe. We don't pay a tithe. We give, honor the Lord with our tithe. That if we're faithful to do that, he said that he would rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Lakeisha, God bless you, woman of God. I appreciate you so much. Thank you all for being in here with me. He will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The second thing it says is that your, your trees, your vineyards will not cast their fruit before it's time, right? So sometimes when you have a garden and you have a, a vineyard or, or an orchard, fruit will fall to the ground. Pecans will fall to the ground before they can ripen. They'll fall off and, and they're just never... They're never ripened. They're never useful to you, right? He says, so he will rebuke the devourer so that your fruit is not fall off the tree before it can ripen and it's useful to you. Not only that, he said he would rebuke to the canker worm, the devourer, those worms that would eat up the fruit, that would eat up the profit before it has the chance to be useful to us as human beings. He will rebuke that. So God says that I will do this. If you are faithful to stay with me, that I will stay with you. I will send forth your health speedily, right? 
So, so there are some things of good health when we honor God and we're faithful to honor him. Well, P pastor, what about if I'm suffering and I'm honoring God? And I, I know that there are people out there who right now you're in a bad place. You're in a bad place physically, but spiritually your heart is strong. The apostle Peter says that after you have suffered a while, that God will make you perfect. He will establish, he will strengthen, and he will settle you. Those are four of the nine blessings, are the nine promises that come out of suffering. They're listed here. And there are more. There are more, but are nine that we address in this book nine blessings that come as a result of your having to suffer. Do, do you have to suffer? Do I have to? Is there things that I can learn? There are some people whose lives might not ever get right. Jonah was an example. He was never going to do what God called him to do without God putting some pressure on him. And then there are those people who have done everything right. And I see you. I see you. God sees you. More importantly, God sees you. And you've done things right. You've honored him. You've been faithful. You've sown. You've, you've sown in people's lives. You've given to those who, who didn't deserve it. You've given to those who deserve it. You've honored God. You've been faithful. But you're suffering. God knows where you're at. And I pronounce the blessings of God in your life. Despite, and this has been done before, the blessings have been pronounced on, healing has been pronounced on you. I can continue to pronounce it. R.W. Shamba, during his lifetime, uh, preached one time and they interviewed him for the news. And uh, he was famous for praying for the sick and seeing them recover. And they asked him in the news, they asked him in a report, said, well, what if you pray for somebody and they die? And he said, bring me another one. <laughs> so you keep praying. Listen, don't give up. Don't give up. You're not out until God says you're out. You're not done until God says you're done. He's got the last word over you. I belong to God. You belong to God. Come on, declare, I am the works of God. I'm miracle. I'm a miracle in the making. You got to know that every miracle, every miracle, every miracle is precipitated, is preceded by difficulty. Folk who are healthy don't need a miracle. But the people who are suffering, who are in their lowest, sometimes you have to get way down here before God, you realize the value of being a millionaire. Sometimes you have to go through the loss of your health and the wealth and the hair and everything else that's valuable, and important to you before you realize how that you got everything. And what's most important is your relationship with Jesus. If you don't have one today, I want to urge you to get one. Go to him. Call on him while he's near. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Kimmy says, I'm a miracle of God. I'm the miracle of God. Lost, undone, but God, oh, he's a restorer of the breach. My brother's dealing with this right now. Keep my nephew covered, but it's been a few years. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being in here with us. I, I've got to get this done. I'm done here. Uh, he will bless the other 90% and it will be the last and blessed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the tithe is not about getting what you have. It's about getting you. Right? It, it's not about getting what you have, but it's about getting you. If he gets you, and, and it's very interesting that the same posture that we have for giving, when we open our hands and our hearts to give to the Lord, that's the same posture that is for receiving. That while your hands are out giving to God, he's going to give right back to you. Amen. We command today 
that your health come forth, spring forth speedily. That what has been taken from you would be restored not fourfold, but one hundredfold. That all that the thief has stolen shall be restored. Everything that's taken and dragged into zigzag shall come back home to you with interest. We commend it by the word of the Lord and by his power in the name of Yeshua, our Christ. Look, I love you all. I want you to know that. And I don't take it lightly. I've been here with you almost an hour. It goes, time goes so quickly when you're having fun. Been talking around a little bit about this book, uh, Crushed. Uh, what I've told you today, you'll find bits and pieces of it in there, but nothing is the same. I want to urge you to get this. I believe that it will be a blessing to you. Someone that you know could use this. Someone who is suffering can use this. Get it in their hands. Maybe you can't reach them. Maybe they're in Egypt or uh, Israel or in Japan or somewhere on the other side of the world. But you can get this to them. On Amazon, they're printed in the language. You can send it to them wherever they are in the world. They're printed in the language that you need. All right. Look, I got to get out of here. I, I appreciate you so very much today. The blessings of the Lord be on you. May he give you his favor, his peace. May you have a blessed Sabbath. Uh, may everything that you desire in his name come to you. Let's not forget that it's National Clergy Appreciation Month. Let your apostle, your prophet, your pastor, your teacher, your evangelist, whoever they are in your life, know that you appreciate them, them today. There are some wonderful elders and bishops out there who are serving God. Deacons, deaconess who, who need to know that you are in their corner, that you're thinking of them. What a wonderful time. Uh, this Sunday, we are honoring the ushers of our ministry. And uh, there ought to be a place where everybody is recognized at some point. I want you to know again that I appreciate you so very much. Uh, if you would be so kind as to pick up one of our books, I believe that they would be a great blessing in your life. I want to thank all of our friends who joined us today, Kimmy and Lakeisha and uh, so many others. Evelyn, I saw you come in. So many others are joining us on YouTube, on uh, Facebook Live, different platforms. Uh, share the broadcast, please, ma'am, and please, sir. Share it to Twitter. Share it to Instagram if you're on those platforms. Share it. And uh, it, I believe it'll be a blessing to somebody. You can copy the link and send it to them by email or by text. And I believe, again, it would be a great blessing to them. Again, I love you all. And uh, I will see you on uh, this coming week. I will be with you Tuesday through Friday between 11 and 1130. All right, I'm out of here. Love you. See you soon.